Well, good morning. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks, uh, first of all, to Professor Avi Gross and to the Nathaniel Academic College and, uh, and to Professor Tudor Parfit for uh, uh, inviting me here. And I'm very honored of this, uh, of this uh, occasion. Um, I am a demographer, and uh, therefore I will try to provide some, uh, some demographic background to uh, the topic uh, of this uh, uh, deliberation. Uh, the current uh, growing interest in uh, uh, Latino Jewish uh, demography uh, is, uh, of course, uh, part of a, a broader debate about an unprecedented quest for conversion to Judaism and or revival of Jewish customs and community activism locally and or migration to Israel and uh, among other countries, especially although also to, to other countries, uh, among thousands or tens of thousands of persons who until one generation ago were not part of this current of interest in Jewish identity, maybe because of less of an awareness, awareness or because the discourse was not uh, so uh, developed. At, uh, uh, from, uh, from the point of view of, uh, of a demographer, we might uh, perhaps uh, uh, say that uh, this uh, is a sort of uh, case of a migration. Of course, not a migration that uh, involves space, but rather a migration that involves identities uh, and uh, of um, uh, beliefs and, 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 and religion. At the one hand, uh, you have the, what I would call the pull factor of the search for meaning and the quest for recovery or even first time attainment of a spiritual attachment and communal bond with Judaism. At the other end of transfer stands the push factor of disappointment, I would say, and disenchantment with both material and ideal spheres currently available to the movers. Let's not forget that those who are searching for Judaism were something else for a long part of their lives. And uh, so consciously or unconsciously, they are seeking for something new, but also perhaps rejecting uh, something else. And this may be um, uh, perhaps related to the crisis of the Western society and its failure to provide the goods and services that it promised. And, and maybe also the crisis, uh, let's be frank, of uh, some of the Christian churches that uh, in fact have lost uh, many members uh, through transfers, transfers from one to another and, and also uh, to uh, this uh, new phenomenon of greater interest uh, to Judaism. The uh, intriguing uh, uh, fact, in any case, is uh, this uh, uh, search for uh, uh, joining and uh, revival of Jewish customs and community activism uh, locally and uh, the search for, for Jewish uh, identity. I will provide just uh, uh, a few remarks about uh, the um, numbers of Jews in different parts of the world. I see that the PowerPoint has disappeared, and it will reappear promptly. Uh, oh, it is beautiful. Uh, beautiful. It shows the diversity of Jewish identities. <laughs> but in the meanwhile, I will We're say more this: more colorful than that. The, it is more than two colors. Uh, it's, there are uh, uh, more uh, colors. Uh, let's say that the Jewish people, uh, very, very broadly stated, uh, originates in the Middle East, and then uh, when it moved uh, to, to the West, it was relatively late. We are speaking, in fact, uh, of a time still in, in the early Middle Ages when uh, the majority of the Jews still lived in the Middle East. Then Spain uh, grew up to, to become uh, one of the main centers, and, and so now we, we can move down uh, to the next slide. And the next slide shows uh, how geography of the Jews has uh, changed in the course of the last uh, 400 uh, years, uh, 300 years uh, or so. Uh, first of all, in terms of, uh, of, of the size of the Jewish population, which uh, all in all was uh, relatively small. We, we had one million more or less of Jews uh, around the Middle Ages at the time of expulsion from Spain. Of course, the number of Jews had to diminish because many were killed and, and many were converted. And, and by way, many were lost uh, due during the, the very difficult uh, travels they had to undertake at that time. But if we move to, to the beginning of modernization, we have about one million Jews, and 
then they, they grew up uh, fantastically to more than 10 million Jews around uh, the beginning of the 20th century. On the eve of the Holocaust, uh, there were about 16 and a half million Jews, then uh, 6 million less. And then over the last uh, 70 years, the numbers have been growing a little, but uh, mostly due to the rapid demographic dynamics of the state of Israel. But what uh, is also interesting is the changing geographical distribution, as I said, from a focus which was predominantly Mediterranean and Middle Eastern, uh, gradually and relatively late in history, uh, the focus uh, moved to uh, Central and Eastern Europe. This was due to a fantastic uh, uh, transition in demography, which is not the topic today, but uh, which I just mentioned. Uh, factually, the very rapid growth of Jewish populations, in, uh, in especially in Eastern Europe, which left those who were not in Eastern Europe as a relatively smaller minority. We have uh, therefore, a uh, kind of Ashkenazization of the Jewish people, which is very much the product of demography, of faster demographic growth, besides the fact that the Shoah very strongly affected those uh, communities. Uh, what uh, remains uh, more recently is, of course, the rapid growth of the state of Israel, which has become a place of the ingathering of exiles from different parts of the world, and where, uh, in fact, uh, Sephardi and other Oriental communities have become a very important component. In fact, the, the distribution in Israel between Ashkenazim and Sephardim is uh, rather egalitarian, whereas in the rest of the world, at least if we speak of the visible part of the Jewish people, and of course we have that we have to elaborate about that, then the vast majority uh, do not come from, from the Mediterranean. They, they rather uh, grew up uh, elsewhere. Having said that, uh, and moving to the next uh, slide, uh, and to the next, the question of who is a Jew today has become prominently complicated because uh, of uh, various factors. One of them is the strong integration between Jews and others in uh, relatively open and relatively friendly societies. I'm, say, I'm, I'm stressing the relatively because even in terms of today, the situation is not ideal, but relatively speaking, vis-a-vis uh, -vis a more distant past, uh, certainly the conditions of Jews are more equal, there is greater opportunities, and uh, since most of the Jews today live in Western countries, in developed countries, their economic uh, situation is also fairly better than it, it had been in the past. But this uh, also opens the challenge of interaction between Jews and non-Jews, and therefore the frequent uh, uh, intermarriage and what we sometimes call assimilation uh, creates uh, situations which are somewhat intermediate between a clearly defined Jewish identity and something which is clearly not. Uh, what I uh, call here in this uh, diagram is the end of dichotomy. What we thought was a clearly divided world between Jews and non-Jews is today a continuum, whereas we have many intermediate categories. And the main topic of this debate is also part of this uh, growing complexity of identities, which also tend to be multiple identities, intersecting identities, uh, mutable and porous and flexible uh, uh, and hybrid identities, uh, and this is, of course, a topic that needs uh, greater elaboration. But very schematically, we can speak of a core, something which is more solidly defined in terms of one's own perception as belonging to, to a given set of uh, people and ideas and also institutions, and, uh, and then various intermediate uh, stages, uh, those who say, I'm partly Jewish, and those who say, and this is relevant today, I am of Jewish background. I'm not, not, not formally Jewish, but I I feel I have in my lineage some, some Jewish background or even some Jewish affinity. These are groups which probably include, uh, we cannot say exactly how much and the numbers, but they include people whose uh, more distant ancestry has had a Jewish component, has had a Jewish experience, although today maybe formally they belong to this or that church which is not precisely uh, Jewish. Having therefore outlined very, very schematically uh, the complexity, I just want to, to quote a couple of, of figures if uh, we assume that 
uh, well, the numbers are not so visible, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, I, I will just quote a couple of figures. If the total Jewish population defined in terms of the core, that is those who say I'm Jewish and nothing else, and, and whatever it means without entering for the moment uh, into the detailed discussion of what does it mean to be a Jew. The total number can be estimated at about 14 million and 400 thousands, which is uh, more than after the Holocaust, but the Shoah, but definitely less than it was uh, before. Four. In uh, North America, including the, the United States, Canada, uh, and technically also Bermuda, which is not far from here, and with 100 Jews certified, the total is about uh, 6 million and, and 100,000 by, by the core definition. In Central America and the Caribbean, uh, 57,000, and in uh, South America, 325,000. But if we take a broader definition that is extending to those who say I'm of Jewish background, those who say I'm the child or the grandchild of the Jew, what we call in Israel and in the world the law of return, that is those rules by the state of Israel which allow people to immigrate to Israel and receive automatically the Israeli citizenship. It goes down three generations and laterally to the spouses of those, whether Jewish or not. Then the numbers uh, easily uh, go up by a factor of two, <laughs> and still the numbers which I've mentioned can be multiplied by two, and still this does not include those who do not say I am a child or a grandchild, but whose ancestry is more distant, and this is uh, integrally a part of our debate uh, today. I move to a very quick uh, observation on population genetics, although we shall hear more uh, in a moment, and I refer uh, to a study which is, in uh, my view, very significant in our case by Susan Adams that was published in 2008 by the American Journal of Human Genetics. And she did, uh, with associates, a study of the uh, DNA structure of the population in the Iberian Peninsula, meaning Spain and Portugal. Now, uh, I, I'm not entering now neither in the terminology or the detailed explanation of what uh, this means, but we are all, uh, well, human life. I hope we all have a soul and a mind, but we are basically chemistry. We are, we are made of, of molecules, and those molecules can uh, somewhat uh, vary and differentiate over time. And, and over time, certain parts remain stable, and certain parts change, and they adjust uh, to, uh, of course, the partners that we have and also to the physical environment. What is interesting is that there are certain parts uh, of the inherited um, uh, DNA which do not change. And this specifically refers to the Y chromosome, which allows to determine paternity and to the mitochondrial part which uh, allows to determine maternity. These are two lines by which you can determine paternity and, uh, for men and maternity for women. And this remaining constant allows you to reconstruct your lineage back uh, along uh, big portions of time. If you look at the right pattern, there is an area, these are different components of the DNA. The green, the, the, the dark green and pale green are especially frequent among Jews. Whereas the red uh, and, and the blue are not so much uh, typical of Jews, but they are typical of other population groups. Now, by measuring how much of that particular part of the DNA total uh, is uh, distributed among the provinces of Spain and, and Portugal, the authors reached the conclusion that there is about uh, uh, in the range of 10 to 15 percent, with some regional variation of the po total population of contemporary Spain and Portugal, who probably might have have um, uh, genetic characteristics who relate then, them to ancient Middle Eastern uh, Jews uh, or others. And uh, this might be a proxy, a very rough proxy, uh, of saying how many in the, um, in the Iberian Peninsula uh, carry some uh, of that origin. That is, those would be those who, uh, in spite of expulsion, did not leave. Uh, the areas, but prefer to convert and remain, and, and in fact, uh, to some extent, at some point, many of them lost the sense of their previous uh, identity. So if to uh, make things simple, we say that possibly about 10% of the total population of current Spain and Portugal uh, carry some Jewish ancestry. And now we try to speculate, and uh, uh, for, forgive me for what I'm going to say now, because it's totally conjectural and speculative, but if, 
If Spain's population and, and Portugal together have uh, 56 million inhabitants today, the 10% would make between 5 and 6 million uh, Iberians of today who might have some, some Jewish origin. But now let, let, let's extrapolate this to Latin America. If looking at different sources, we have a Spaniard origin diaspora in Latin America and also in some other countries who is evaluated at about 200 millions. Not all Latin Americans are of Spanish or Portuguese origin, of course. And 100 millions of Portuguese origin, it makes 300 millions. If we take the same 10% that we have according to the Adams study in Spain and Portugal, that would make 30 millions. So 30 millions plus five is about 35 millions. And then we have more in southern Italy, in the Philippines and New Guinea perhaps and elsewhere. We might have a, a theoretical potential, and, and again, I apologize for, for this very far-fetched type of calculation, about 35 millions or more of people who might have Jewish ancestry. Many of them do not have the faintest idea of this, but may are becoming more and more aware of that. And so this is purely speculative, but this is a beginning just to, to try to limit the limit of the uh, area that a demographer and uh, a geneticians might look at. Um, the uh, next uh, and the next uh, is somewhat anti-climax because, as you know, Spain and Portugal have now adopted legislation which is very friendly to the Jews in a sense in order to correct the injustice that was accomplished during the uh, 1400s and 1500s and they have uh, adopted uh, the idea that anyone who can prove uh, uh, Spanish or Portuguese origins might uh, get the Spanish and Portuguese citizenship just by undergoing a relatively simple procedure. Um, well, so far, uh, and I've been a little bit involved in, in monitoring this process, uh, I, I learned there have been only 2,500 requests for Spanish uh, citizenship, which is very, very distant from the millions that we had predicted. I, I had predicted myself that theoretically, let's um, forget the 35 millions, but about 3 million people, including many who live in Israel and in Europe and elsewhere, might be interested at getting the Spanish citizenship. Uh, this is not going so fast at uh, the moment. Uh, so it, it may be that uh, to, to some extent the um, uh, roots are totally forgotten and therefore we are speaking of a purely theoretical uh, domain. Uh, reality is much uh, more uh, limited. So there has been uh, recently a very interesting survey in the United States, the Pew survey of Jewish Americans, which many of you certainly uh, know. And uh, I was checking how many are of uh, Latin American background among those who have any kind of Jewish attachment in the United States of America, and how many define themselves as simply Jewish or having some kind of Jewish background or affinity and, uh, 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 and so. So we, we find there are in, in the United States uh, more than 100,000 people uh, who are Jewish, and, and that's, Ill, uh, that's it, uh, born in Latin America uh, or born in the, in the US. But there are uh, more than 170,000 who say I have Jewish background, no, not Jewish myself, but with a Jewish background, most of them born in the US, and another uh, between uh, 100 and 125,000 who say Jewish affinity. I, I feel something, I, I cannot prove it, but I feel that there is some relevant something. And uh, so it makes for uh, nearly 300,000 people in the US. Uh, some of them uh, might be simply the children of, of older intermarriages in this country, but some of which might have a, a, a longer term relationship with Judaism, especially we are speaking of those who are Latino in the US uh, of, of today. Uh, the next uh, says a word about uh, the uh, other major direction for migration, which is the state of Israel. And we have now very interesting uh, arrivals from many countries in Latin America of, of, of people who have joined Judaism recently, which creates for the sociologist and the demographer uh, very interesting issues. There are, in fact, four different transitions involved in this passage from, from many countries, uh, Peru, Venezuela, Brazil, uh, and, 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 and uh, Mexico and other countries. 
moving from Latin America to a new distant country in society, often from a rural environment to an, an urban context, from a previous religious orientation and tradition to uh, Orthodox Judaism, because in Israel conversion is governed by Orthodox authorities, which makes the passage particularly complicated. And, and often from previous unawareness of these issues to the political turmoil of Israel's settlements, many of these new immigrants come from a, a mountain in Peru to a place which is in the West Bank, and you imagine that the, the transition politically is rather complicated. So th this makes very, very intriguing uh, questions. The, uh, the next uh, thing that uh, I would like to, um, uh, to uh, uh, quickly uh, mention is that there are, of course, many different uh, ways and modes for being Jewish. I, I've stressed uh, so far the religious dimension, but Judaism is not only a religion, it is also a sense of peoplehood, it is a sense of participation, it may also be related to a particular set of political beliefs or at least of attitudes to the world and society, the factor of what we call tikkun olam, that is improving the situation not only of ours but of all of the people concerned. These are very central tenets in, in Judaism. And, and here we have one interesting illustration of what happens with the transition of these migrants from Latin America into the United States. Uh, this graph compares the attitudes uh, among those uh, born in Latin America and those born uh, in the US, which stresses the contextualization of process. Uh, uh, those born in uh, Latin America uh, and have uh, Jewish origin of, of any sort would uh, uh, stress particularly uh, closeness to Israel and observing the Jewish law, being part of the Jewish community, uh, also uh, being interested in traditional Jewish food, those born um, and, and remembering the Holocaust. Those born in the US would rather stress leading an ethical life and working for, uh, for social justice. It means that there is some, some, uh, some interesting Americanization of values even among those who come from, from Latin America. And the more significant uh, observation comes here with uh, observing that, as I've mentioned, Judaism is a very complex, it's a multivariate uh, total of, of, various com of various components. Each of us tends to stress a particular part of it, and of course this is legitimate, but we have to be aware that there are as well other ways of being Jewish which we must at least understand and possibly tolerate and respect. And so where the traditional normative ritual component which simply stated we call religion or religiosity is, is fundamental and important. The question of learning, of knowledge, the question of philanthropy, voluntarism, organizations, the fact of activism in civil society, and also the fact of being somewhat connected with uh, Israel uh, needs a responsibility and fulfillment uh, uh, besides, of course, the family and the network of the life cycle, which is so fundamental in Judaism. All of these are fundamental components uh, at the center of which stands one simple, complicated, in fact, but, but simply stated uh, parameter, which is feeling part of the Jewish people, Wh whatever it means and wherever it is. But feeling a sense of Jewish peoplehood. Uh, this uh, is, in fact, the product of a very complicated statistical data processing, and uh, though I think the results are applicable in a variety of contexts, it's true with American data, it's true with Israeli data, with Latin American data, with French data, and, and so on. So the point is that uh, joining Judaism, and this is my point, is uh, perhaps more complicated than we believe, because on the one hand, the typical procedure of joining Judaism is one of religious conversion. But as long as you do that, uh, you should also be aware that there are other components, and I'm not sure how easily these other components are transmitted and learned by the relevant people, so it makes the issue more intriguing, and of course our task is to uh, state that. My, my, my last statement uh, stresses the problematicity of this. It is that conversion is not simple in the state of Israel, 
the rabbinate governs uh, conversion. The number of conversions in Israel is very small vis-a-vis -vis the number of potential applicants, including the immigrants who come from a variety of countries. And uh, in fact, uh, the potential is huge. The actual um, realization of this aspiration is, is very limited. Uh, the ups and downs and the contradictions that over the last several years have characterized the institutional aspects of conversion in Israel demonstrate how difficult it is to reach a broad consensus on the subject uh, which interests uh, us uh, very broadly. And uh, therefore, I will conclude by noting that uh, Latino Jewish demography addresses many fundamental issues of collective identity, so far neglected, unexplored, or removed. It unveils new vistas of the overall meaning, boundaries, contents, connective mechanisms of global Jewish communities, and as such, it represents a big challenge for both the religious and the lay leadership in Israel and worldwide today. Thank you very much.